video I'm going to show you how you can use Microsoft Excel to build a data table where you use formulae to do your own calculations. This means that instead of using a calculator, Microsoft Excel will do all your calculations for you and that's really handy when there's a lot of different calculations. So I'm starting with a blank workbook and I'm going to be making a data table to measure the specific energy in fuels. So along the top row here, I'm going to put in the values of the different uh, variables I'm going to measure. I'm going to be measuring the initial um, mass of fuel, and then I need to give the uncertainty and I need to give the units. Um, in Excel, I can on an Apple computer, I can press Option, Shift, and then the plus key, and that gives me the uncertainty symbol. This is going to be measured to 0 0.8. 0, 0,1 grams. Um, I'm also going to measure the final mass of fuel. Um, this is also going to be given to 0 0.01 grams. And I'm going to be measuring the change in mass of fuel. Um, now, because here the, um, the change in mass of fuel is going to be calculated um, by subtracting the initial mass from the final mass because it's a subtraction we have to add the uncertainties of the two so this is going to be going to be 0 0.02 grams um, I'm also going to be measuring the mass of water that's the mass of the water in the calorimeter this is given to the same degree of uncertainty as the mass of the fuel I'm going to be measuring the initial temp Temperature, temperature of water. Um, this is going to, I'm going to be using a normal thermometer, so this is going to be measured to the nearest um, degree, so that's plus one. Now for degrees centigrade, I need to um, insert the symbol for degrees. So I go to um, insert symbol. Um, I, I've already got it here because I've recently used it, but I just type in degree and it gives me different symbols. I could use degree C, I'm just gonna use the degree symbol, and then I type my own C. So that's initial temperature of water to the nearest one degree C. Then there's the final temperature of water. That's also going to be measured to um, one degree centigrade, so um, insert symbol, I've already got it here, so C, and then it's the change in temperature of water. Tem let me spell that right. Temperature of water, so minus, um, so this is now because we are again subtracting two values, each with their own uncertainty. This is now going to have an uncertainty of two degrees centigrade. Um, okay, now you'll see here that um, you can't read these values and that's because the alignment of the cells. So what I'm gonna do is highlight all the cells and a few more, because I'm gonna have a few more and I'm going to select wrap text. You see what it does now is it makes the cell deeper so that the te text fits in properly. I don't like the fact that temperature here falls on two lines. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna increase the width of one column like that. Sorry, what I can do is actually highlight all the columns. If I change the width of one column, it will change them all to the same width. Um, I also think it's nice if those are centralized as well. Okay, so now I'm going to be using um, formulae in order to make calculations. Uh, first of all, um, let me just put in um, the fuel. So let's say the fuel I'm using in one particular trial is methanol. So I'm going to put in methanol 1, and then maybe methanol 2 for a trial 2, and methanol for trial three. Okay, now here I'm going to take a measurement. I'll put a value in that cell. Same here. This cell here is just going to be 
um, the difference between these two. So I'm going to introduce what is called a formula. A formula will do a calculation for you. So you start a formula by pressing equals, and now I want to find the difference between this cell here, and if I hover over it, you'll see the little C2 comes up below, and that's because it's in column C, row two. So this is cell C2, and I want to subtract um, B1, so that's cell B1. So what this is gonna do, sorry, not B1, uh, B2. You can see it highlights the cells that are involved in the formula. So this, whatever I put in B1 and C2, um, this um, cell is going to be the calculation of C2 minus B2, which is the difference between the two. At the moment, it gives zero because there's nothing in those cells. Um, same with the, um, here, the change in the temperature of the water. Um, I want it to be the, um, the difference between these two. So I'm going to type in equals, um, and now it's G2 because you can see it's column G row 2 minus F2. Okay, and that gives me my difference. Now, let's say I want to do the same calculation for these three columns. I don't have to type it in again and again. I can just highlight the one cell. You see there's this little square at the bottom. I can just drag it down like this. Now, Microsoft Excel is very clever because if you look, it adjusts the formulae. It predicts that this, the cell, this cell is, not gonna, um, is going to be looking at the difference between these two cells, and this cell is going to be looking at the difference between these two cells. And if you look at the formula here, you see it's taking the difference between C4 and B4. So it's taking the difference between these two cells here. Now, um, for this particular investigation, I want to calculate the energy that is transfer, transferred into the um, water. So I'm just going to type in energy transferred, um, and this is going to be in joules. Um, it would be a good idea if you work out what the uncertainty would be of this, but for this video, um, I'm not going to do that. Now, the energy transferred, there's a specific formula, um, which is mc delta t. M is the mass of the water, C is the specific heat capacity for water, and um, delta T is the change in temperature of the water here. Okay, so M is going to be what is it, is whatever is in um, this cell here, E2. So again, for the formula, I'm going to type, type equals E2, and then I need to multiply. For this, I'm going to use, you use the asterisk, which is normally above the 8 number. Um, and then I'm going to multiply by the specific heat capacity of water. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head. I think it's 4.162 or something. You can put in the correct value. Um, then I need to multiply that by the um, change in temperature. So that's going to be whatever is in this cell here, H2. Now, H2 is a formula, but of course, that's going to that's gonna give the difference between these cells. So I can still use H2 because that'll represent the change in temperature of the water. And of course that also gives a zero because all these cells are zero. But again, I can drag it down. And if I click on it here, it tells me that what the formula is. And you see it's adjusted the formula. Now it's E4 rather than E2 and it's H4 rather than H2. It's adjusted it predicting that I want to do calculations along this row here. Right, my final row is for specific energy. This is the energy transferred divided by the mass of fuel used. So specific energy, the units here are going to be in joules per gram. Um, and so this is going to be, it's the energy transferred. So it's cell um, I2, so I press equals I2, and then divided by the change in mass of the fuel, because that tells me how much fuel was burned in order to release that amount of energy. So that's going to be um, D2. Okay, now it gives me kind of an error here. It's saying, well, you're dividing by zero, which uh, you can't actually do. I know I can't do that. Um, but once I put values in, that will be uh, sorted out. Right, so my data table is now ready for me to collect my raw data. I'm just gonna put in some um, 
kind of made up values here um, just so you can get an idea of what's happening. So let's say the initial mass was 21.15 um, grams after burning that becomes 20.96 okay so what that means is there was a change in mass of fuel of um, uh, 0 0.19 so the change in mass was minus 0.19 Let's say the mass of the water was, um, let's say, 31.01 grams. The initial temperature of the water was 21 degrees, and it heated up to 35 degrees. Okay, so now I've got all the values that I need. Um, you'll see that, um, and once I, once I do the same for these rows, it'll also give me a value here for the specific energy for these. Now, can you see that it's giving me values to way too many um, uh, decimal places? So I'm going to um, just highlight that and I'm going to decrease, so decrease the number of, um, um, of uh, decimal places to zero. This is actually still giving me a value to too many um, significant figures. Um, but later you can you can change that value to the you know the appropriate number of significant figures that you want um, but this is giving me a value specific energy now it is giving it to me as minus um, and that's because the change in mass of the fuel was minus um, I guess what I could do is change this formula around because I actually want the change in mass of fuel it's the the mass of fuel burnt so what I'm actually going to do is change instead of b2 minus c2 uh, sorry, C2 minus B2, I'm going to change that B2 minus C2. Okay, now it gives me a positive value there. All I've got to do is drag that down and it'll correct the others as well. Now, um, can you see that I, I made a change here um, and it, it redid the calculation so it came up with the correct value here. I'm also just going to quickly centralize these, makes it a bit easier to read. Now, you can do that with um, all of your other values as well. I hope that helps.